Hello YouTuber, it is I, Robot of Robot in Paradise. Today I will be reading The Soup. I mean, what kind of name is The Soup, honestly? It's the only reason I'm reading the story. Let us begin. I had a son. His name was Tom. Dude, Sonic Car Thought EXE crossover, dude. All the cheap shot I know. I remember just how much I loved him and what for. What for what? The sweetest child anyone could possibly ever see. Just a pure bundle of joy bursting with positive energy. But along with the good memories also came the bad ones. I still remember his death and I see myself as completely at fault for it. It really was my fault if only I hadn't been so stupid and ignorant. Well, it all started on a sweet sum sweet summer morning in a Kentucky in a Kentucky not in Kentucky so we're in a uh, dimension was in Kentucky okay guys which is where me and my only son Tom lived we had moved a few months earlier away from Texas where we used to live with my boyfriend until we broke up now I lived alone with my only son in a pretty large house by the countryside I found it very peaceful there and thought that everybody would, around me would have a very positive impact on my Tommy. The children, friends, classmates, and even the neighbors. I didn't have any neighbors besides the one old lady who lived across the street. At first I thought she was kind of creepy and that I should stay away from her as much as possible. But later as I got to know her, she seemed like a pretty nice woman. Her husband had been murdered a few years ago, everyone just dying. I hope it involves soup. So she lived alone in her small little house. Her name was Milo. Me and Milo would usually talk after I dropped off Tom at school. I remember how she would always tell me about her babysitting business. And oddly enough, she would always double over his words about her soups just after that. I got it. Let's sell some odd soups, right? I always thought it was strange, but I did realize that she was an old lady and that she was probably going see now. Kind of a bit rude. Soon our conversations became shorter and shorter as her request to babysit grew tedious to tedious amounts. And she would always end her conversations with, Oh no, I have a child scheduled at five today. I must go prepare the meal. Have a nice day, Joan. I must go make some soup. I just finished babysitting. I am quite finished. I always wanted to let her babysit Tom since she got great reviews and I always seemed so nice and cheery. Wait, and always seemed so nice and cheery. Sorry. And I thought she'd be a great influence on him. So, on this very morning, I received a call from my office saying I needed to join them for an important meeting. I hopped out of bed and ran down to the kitchen to make myself breakfast and get ready. While I was cooking, my son Tom walked into the room and asked me why I was up so early. I immediately remember the fact that it was summer, and I didn't have anywhere Tommy could go to while I was away. So this is where the babysitting thing's gonna tie in, right? Suddenly I remembered all my neighbor's babysitting business, and gave Milo a call. She seemed very tired on the phone, and I asked her if she was okay. She said she was a little burned out because she had triplets staying with her yesterday, but she said she would happily watch over Tom while I was away. After dropping off Tom, I peacefully went to the meeting, my heart at rest, knowing that Tom was in good hands. And that's going to set off all the death flags, right? I patiently sat through the whole thing, excited to see my son after it was over. As soon as we were excused, I ran out to my car and put it in drive. I sped the whole way home. He, she went 90 on the freeway. My heart racing with excitement, eager to finally see my precious boy. I quickly shut off the engine and locked my car, speeding towards the front door. I was greeted by Milo, who welcomed me into her home which smelled deliciously like meat and vegetables. Are you cooking another soup? I asked her, smiling down at the old lady. She nodded at her head, sliding out a chair for me. I graciously sat down, and Milo offered me a plate of soup. I cooked it for your son, but he's asleep right now, so I decided not to bother him. I smiled, picking up a spoon and began eating. The soup had carrots and beans floating around it. It had chunks of large, strange meat in it, but I have to admit, it tasted, oh, no, no. What kind of meat is this, Milo? I asked her, my mind full of curiosity. It's my secret ingredient. Fuck you. It makes all my soup special, she said, gleaming with pride. I had a few spoonsoles before standing up to go to the fridge. 
You wouldn't mind if I took some sour cream, I asked, and started opening the fridge. Marlo smiled completely wiped off her face as she saw me open the fridge, her jaw dropping to scream out aloud, No. But it was too late. For inside the fridge, la da la da la da, I came face to face my old son, fuck you, or at least his head. At first I thought I was hallucinating, so I turned to Marlo to see if this was real. She flashed me the scariest smile I ever seen, her eyes wide and glowing down at me. Her teeth were all bloody, but no open wounds in her gums, which meant it was not her blood. Then it hit me. My, my son was obvious plot twist. Drumroll, please. Well, I'll put a drum roll back there if I'm not too lazy. The soup. Ooh, spooky. Eh. Kind of obvious plot twist when you really think about it. And a bit disturbing, though. Which I could give it some credit, you know. Though, you know, when she starts talking about the babysitting thing and the soup at the same time, it kind of, you know, connects really easily. Now, from a writing standpoint, I mean, like, grammar and shit, right? This was not that bad, honestly. I could at least read the thing, besides, you know, the funny, those little things I pointed out just be a dick, right? And so this thing has a 5.8 out of 10 on the creepypasta.com. And I'm kind of hmm, from 35 votes. No one left reviews, so I can't really see what other people's opinions are on this story. But overall, it seems like it got average reviews. And yeah, I'd, I'd give it somewhere around there too. Maybe like a 6, a 7, you know? Like, the story's okay, you know? It has a decent twist. It's just slightly disturbing, you know, without going into too much detail, like... Though I do think the scary face thing at the end is just retarded. I mean, how did this character not notice that Milo had all this blood and, you know, crap all over? It just doesn't make sense, you know? Like, you know, it just doesn't... Whatever, right? It's just, just, I just nitpick stories. And, you know, it's not like these stories have problems or something, you know? Well, that was enough of that. And this was me, Robot, over on Age Paradise. I hope you enjoyed this story, The Soup. And I am signing out of here.